Well, you must. I came here first, hoping... Well, I'd best be off. I'll come with you to the police station. No, I'll go myself. Thanks all the same. William Overs has absented himself. Constable Horton is here to ask each of you when you last saw William. So, Eric, we'll begin with you. Till Wednesday. Where does he live? I must go home. Over the way, but he won't be there. Prize and helping her a bit. Yes, I could do that. No, I shall send a telegram, then they'll know more quickly. That's right. Now, you'll need a copper or two, though. <laughs> a shilling. I reckon you'll need that. Safe and well. Hope Tamsum comes back. Willie. Well, at least he's alive. But what does he think he's up to? I do, may you be when you're at home? Uh, I'm helping Mrs. Price a bit. Can I get you anything? Give me time, boy. Give me time. Well, have me think. Was it tea I wanted or was it great blacking? Aye, that's no like. Fetch me a tin of blacking, boy. Now, Mr. Price didn't tell me out about you. I only came yesterday. There, it's not blacking I want, it's matches. So, that's helping old Nancy. Well, she needs help. Been different, maybe, if that son of hers had lived. 
Joey. Aye. Turned out wild than Joey. Got into trouble with the Earl. Next thing he's off to Australia. Mind that doesn't follow in his footsteps, young man. I can't. I don't know what he did. Poaching in the Earl's woods. And thieving. The Earl came down here himself to warn Nancy. But she spoke to him all high and mighty. Look what it's done to her. What has it done to her? Well, I can see, Carter. Joey, dead and gone. And her stuck here all alone in the world. The Earl might have got her into one of the almshouses if she hadn't been so proud about Joey. He looks after folk, does the Earl. What's that in me matches for? He was for them. You'll be telling me I'm a liar next house for sugar. No, you didn't. Give me a pound of sugar and choke it up on slate. No, I can't without asking Mrs. Price first. Give me them matches then. Here's a penny for them. Nobody treats Sarah Barnes as if she were just a bit of common dirt. Who's that? Did I hear that fairy Barnes? Yes. She wanted to buy some sugar, but she bought some matches instead for a penny. I shouldn't have it no good, that fairy. Always sticking her nose in. I told her I don't want her here, but she still comes. Shall I, shall I go and stir the fire so you can go and sit by no. it? No. I'll look to the shop now. When that woman's about, you have to keep your eyes skimmed. I can watch. She's gone now, anyway. Oh, she'll be back and up to no good. Oh. Now, you go out and play for a bit. Here. Now, take this story. It's a lad's story and one of my Joy's favourites. Well, thank you. Now, put it in your pocket, lad. Now, be off. And don't get into mischief. No, I won't. Lady Alice Armshouses. The Earl might have got her into one of the almshouses if she hadn't been so proud about Joey. Get away. I've not done anything. Oh, it's a fine tale. You will your own Sunday up to your tricks. I've never been here in my life before. Oh, eh? What's that in your pocket? Flash Jim the Cracksman. There now. I've caught a thief as well as a poacher. It's not my boat. I've taken you to his lordship. No, no, I'm not a thief and I don't know how to poach. Go, go. Hello! Where is it, Lodger? Well, that's the wall. Who have you got here? One of them little blighters has been laying snares and stoning ducks, your Lodger. Really? I never did. And look what I found in his pocket. No, oh, no. It's not my book. I never laid snares. I was just looking at the water. And I suppose I was just looking at water last Sunday morning when I saw the loosened stones at yon ducks. Sunday morning? Oh, Master Wall. Who was all in trapped? Oh, well. Uh, well, uh, I was looking after your Lordship's interests. My interests are the welfare of my tenants and employees. Oh, of course, my Lord. But what are we to do with him? Hand him over to the police or shall I give him a good birch in? I will speak with the boy, Master Boy. And the first thing I will want to know is why is he not in school? I ah, got in there, my lord. And what about that book? Thank you, Master Boy. There's no need for you to wait. Thank you, my lord. Do you know what I would have done 
If I had found one of my own sons reading this gallows literature... No, sir. I would have made him wash his eyes out with soap. I would grieve that one of my boys at Staisley School corrupted their mind with this vile trash. What is your school, boy? Rutland Street Elementary. And why are you not in it? Well, I thought... I thought I'd help old Mrs. Price a bit. Rutland Street, where's that? Manchester. Then why are you not in Manchester? Well, come back here! Mrs. Price. The woods up the road. You keep out of them woods, Joey. You'll be took if you go there. Who do they belong to? They belong to the Earl, and he won't have nobody there. If you go and get caught, what's he do? You must never go. What did he do to Joey? You leave my Joey alone. Folks are always on about him. He's a good boy if they leave him alone. Mary Barnes doing. She told that Mr. Bastable she found pheasant's feathers in my garden. Cheek poking about in my garden. Then the Earl came and said bad things about Joey too. I said he was a good lad. He might not work regular, but that's the way of lads. And then the Earl said he'd give him 20 pound to emigrate to Australia and start afresh. I said he'd never take it. But he did. And I never saw him again. away before it's stolen again. Mrs. Price. Yes, dear. Would you sell the shop? Hee hee, lad. There's none would buy it. There's no trade to speak of. But would you sell it? Oh, well, I don't care for change. Where would I live? Well, the almshouses are very nice. Maybe. But then again, Joey, if you was to stay along of me and not go traipsing off again, we'd get along nicely. I'm not Joey. But Mrs. Price, if my father was to buy the shop, I could run it. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Price.
And what do you think you're doing, eh? I fell over the... That is, uh... I'm helping here. I see. Helping here. And not giving a Chinese fig for what's going on at home. You sent a telegram. Honestly, I did yesterday. We got the telegram. Some chaps took the tandem in Stockport before I realised. And I got a lift in a car. I thought I was going to Manchester. And... Yes. Then... Then I got fetched up here. Yes. Did... Did they bring the tandem home? They said they would. Never mind the tandem. Yes, they brought it home. What about us? Uh, I... You talking about the tandem? When we were off our heads with worry? And all the street talking? And the police out looking? And your mother screaming about the canal all night? You said you got the telegram. Yes! The morning after! When I thought we'd have to put your mother in the madhouse! She was so overcome with worry. And what did the telegram tell us? Only that you weren't dead. And what do you say now? Not that you're sorry. Oh, no. All you can talk about is that tandem. I thought you might the tandem. Like it? I'd like to throw it in the canal. You wouldn't have got so far if it hadn't have been for that thing. Well, are you coming now? I suppose so. Suppose so? Are you my son? I've come all the way here. I've hired a trap in Stockport. And you suppose you'll come? I've... They come about the poaching, Joey. Oh, why didn't you pay heed when I told you? What else have you been up to, Willie? It's Mrs. Price. She owns the shop. I have to go now, Mrs. Price. This is my father, and I'm needed at home. He's no business to be here at all. But he's barely come. Oh, you were always one for wandering, Joey. She thinks I'm a son. Well, you can think again. Get your coat. Sorry I have to go now, Mrs. Price. But the shop's a bit tidier. Sorry. Mm. It looks different. Oh, I shall never be able to find my way around. Goodbye. And thank you for what you did. Why must you always be wandering off, Joey? I'll never see you alive again. Father, Mrs. Price will sell at the shop. Oh, what's that to me? Just, just I thought you might like to buy it. We could set it up and we could run it and then help you. I'd like that, really. I enjoyed no end working and tidying it. You enjoyed it? I didn't mean that. You I... meant it all right. It's all part and parcel of your behaviour right through. Never thinking of anyone else but Willie Overs. No! Wait! Willie, what are you up to? Stupid lad, take care of that. You said you'd take care of your people. Well, what about old Mrs. Price? She needs taking care of. She's too old to run that shop. She's modelled in a wit. Why don't you put her in the almshouse? With your name on it. Are you the father of this boy? Yes, I am. Willie, get in the trap. You see, he stays in school, my good man. Education is now within the reach of every child in this land. And it behoves every parent to see their children avail themselves of it. A new boy. We'll keep away from evil books in future. My good man? What does he mean, talking to me like that? Yep. All this starting and stopping, it'll cost you a fair package to get the stop for. Really? You caught him, then? Stop! Don't you go kissing and slobbering over him. He's not worth it. He don't give a straw for us. He's been enjoying himself. And when I told him the state you were in, he asks, will I give him a shop to play with? Well, I'll be off then. Uh, uh, the lad's back, and that's something. Aye, he's back. And he'll not run away again after I've done with him. Alfred! Right, my lad. No, Alfred. Alex, you all right? He's all right. It's your mother and me that ain't. He's dealt as a mortal blow. And I doubt we shall ever get over it. Willie, and we were always so proud of you.
and the final.